Hey, good afternoon, Freedom Wing. Colonel Tom Pemberton with you. Uh, beautiful day outside. I hope that you got a chance to uh, at least take some air in from the outside. Uh, I'm here with uh, Chief Capaldi. Uh, we are physically distancing ourselves so that uh, we're making sure that we're following all the CDC guidelines and things like that. So, Chief and I just want to do a Facebook Live session today. Uh, we do have some of our folks here uh, doing virtual UTAs. We have some maintenance folks out uh, getting some pre-deployment pre, uh, training. So they are, uh, so we did want to give a, uh, a short uh, Facebook Live session to kind of bring you up to speed with what's going on, what's happened since the last time that we talked with you, uh, and just talk about some things that are going on in the Freedom Wing. So uh, let me start out by saying that uh, the base here is still in HP Health Protection Condition Charlie. Um, still the same rules that we've been operating are under apply. Uh, there's still a local 50 mile radius here around the base that they're allowing people to come and go from. The only change from that is now uh, after discussions with the installation commander, we are able to bring some individuals that are mission critical outside that 50 50 miles to base, all right? Uh, they come directly from their home to base, do what needs to be done, and then they go back home again. Those are few and far between, so we're not opening the gates for everybody. Uh, if you are needing to come to base for some type of mission critical event, or your command needs, uh, needs to have you come out to base for something, work through that with your squadron leadership, all right? And they will make sure that uh, uh, everything that's uh, need to be taken care of is done and so we do this smartly and so it protects everybody all right um, there are some changes going on in the Africa leadership uh, General Scobie still as the commander uh, but uh, the CD is uh, General Flournoy who is going to be retiring here soon and so we salute him for the, the many number of years that he's de his dedicated service uh, General Berger General Matt Berger, who was the deputy, excuse me, that was the A3, Africa A3, will be stepping in as the uh, deputy commander for Africa, and he's going to do a great job. I like to uh, nickname Cheese Berger. Uh, and then uh, General Durham, General Bull Durham, uh, who was, has been a wing commander previously and was most recently down in uh, San Antonio with the recruiting command. Uh, he'll be coming up to fulfill the Africa A3 role. Uh, so we have some good changes that are going on within Africa during this uh, this pandemic time. Um, so it's if as we get more leadership changes, we'll we'll certainly let you know. Absolutely. So uh, with that, we wanted to kind of give you um, information that you may be hearing from outside sources, but we want you to hear it from us as well. So um, for those of us that are maybe a little bit more seasoned or mature. The, uh, the acronym that we grew up with was ATSO, the ability to uh, survive and operate. So what you are hearing probably outside now is the new normal, right? How do we do things in the new normal? So for us more seasoned, it's ATSO, right? So what, what you need to be prepared for is that we are probably going to be in this cycle of um, peaks and valleys with COVID for the next 12 to 18 months. So what we need to do is learn how to operate in this new normal or ATSO. So. It's true. Um, it's kind of uh, throw a little cold water in your face when you have to think about it, though, right? For 12 to 18 <laughs> months. But we're going to make it through. We will. Uh, we anticipate uh, conservatively around the fall of 21 before we'll have a vaccine to this. Uh, but I think between now and then, I think we're going to be, we will have worked through lots of issues and challenges. And again, we're going to make it through, we're going to come through stronger. Um, some of the things you've seen, uh, I think, on the news, uh, in fact, there's one happening right now in Atlanta, I believe, is the America Strong uh, flybys with the Blue Angels and the uh, Air Force Thunderbirds. And they actually came, flew over here this last week over at uh, JPMDL, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's giving a lot of hope to people, and that's giving, uh, boosting some spirits. Uh, well, we, we in the 514th and the 305th Active Duty and the 108th Air National Guard are doing the same. So we're going to work 
through doing an America Strong flyby with a three ship C-17, KC-10, and a KC-135 over some of our local hospitals in this area. Just to salute them uh, for standing in the in the breach in those front lines supporting uh, taking on this uh, pandemic head on. Now, granted, the heavies might not be as sexy as a, a C a F-16 or an F-18 doing a flyby, but it's still going to get the point across of seeing the heavy airplanes coming through and, and showing them that we su we support what they're doing and uh, and we got their backs, right? But sir, it's it's big sexy. Big sexy, big yes. Casey Ten, big sexy. So we'll we'll stick with that. I like that. So at this point, uh, we're going to break, Chief, or uh, excuse me, Kim. Are there any questions that people have yet? No, but we have 177 people watching. Oh, very live, cool. And they're Great. Mostly for Christmas and Christmas. Great. Awesome. Very good. So as, as we go through here, we uh, Chief and I put in breaks here. You can see the dark colors. Um, if you have questions, send the questions in, and we'll answer the questions. And if they don't get in until the end, we'll make sure that they get answered so that you have a uh, have your questions answered. All right? So as we're going through this, this period where you may not be able to come into the installation, you may be concerned about if your enlistment is uh, coming up or if you wish not to re-enlist but to extend, um, we are still doing that. We are still open for business. So um, if you are looking to do a re-enlistment, uh, we are able to do those virtually. Um, some rules still apply, right? So your official that is uh, doing the oath has to actually see you. You have to see each other. Um, you have to see each other virtually. There has to be a flag present. Um, and then uh, all the associated paperwork has to be done. So please work with your um, unit career advisor or your group career advisor. And then all things career advisor is the wing career advisor, Master Sergeant Westcott over in the FSS. So please work with them. And then, sir, um, somebody actually brought up a question about retirement. Mm -hmm. So we've had some individuals that have um, put in for retirement, and they've decided that, hey, with everything going on, that they now wish to stay, case in point, right? So um, yes, the answer is yes. So the way to do that is um, if you are outside of that 30 days of retirement, it's through VPC. So when you do that, the key is you must have strong justification on why you're pulling back your retirement. And as it works up, I think it's the first general officer in the line is the approving official to, uh, to do that. So for me, obviously, it was General Ogden who approved my um, withdrawal of retirement. So if you still want to serve, um, go ahead and pull that retirement. Okay. I like it. I like it. So... Uh, I think last time we talked a couple times uh, in some of the videos, we talked that we uh, had some of our medical professionals and Air, uh, Air Force Reserve Command, throughout Air Force Reserve Command, uh, that were mobilized, brought to JBMDL and sent forward and, and were working in New York City. And uh, they've been doing some amazing work. They have now farmed them out to seven different hospitals, I think, in the uh, New York and New Jersey area that are assisting some of those hospitals with uh, on the front lines. Um, when they created those, when they mobilized those individuals, uh, NORTHCOM created this uh, 64th AEG, Air Expe Expeditionary Group. Uh, and uh, we pushed to make sure that we had reservists that were taking care of reservists. So the 64th AEG, I've said it before, Colonel Byers, our own Colonel Myers device is the commander of the 64th AEG. Uh, chief Warner from our MXG is the chief of the MXG. And uh, Senior Master Sergeant Moody with the 88th Aerial Port Squadron is the first sergeant for this, uh, the AEG and serving in downtown New York, uh, along with uh, Sergeant Dacate, uh, Dacate um, and, and the FSS role and Persco role. And they're doing, the stories you hear of the things that they're doing down there is just amazing to me and I, I, I salute them and uh, this is they're just doing great work for the Freedom Wing and for uh, for all of us here so we should be very proud about that. Thank you. So I think uh, we would uh, not be doing service to our members that have um, been activated during this time. So uh, during the last 40 days uh, we've had several squadrons that have had members that have been activated 
uh, two big ones were our uh, ASTS and our AES. So our uh, ASTS is actually down in New York City, right, doing all that. But our AES um, went down to Charleston, uh, did some training, and then were sent out both eastbound and westbound to uh, do patient movement in the air. So very busy, very busy in the last 40 days, sir. It's pretty cool. They've had some training on this, uh, the TIS, they called it, this transportation isolation system that was originally designed for the Ebola virus, mm -hmm. and they put that in the back of the C-17, and they're able to transport patients in this uh, and do it safely so they can protect the crew members. So that's pretty cool. It is cool. So um, to kind of piggyback off of when I was talking about enlistments mm -hmm. and reenlistments and retirements and whatnot, you may also, your cat card may be expiring, right? Makes everybody a little nervous. It catches most of us by surprise. It did mine. I didn't realize. So here's, here's what you can do. You can still come on the installation when you're able to come on with that cat card. So all cat cards that were expiring between, um, between 1 January 2020 are extended until 31 August 2020. But the catch is write your certificates. How do I log in with my certificates? So there is a way. So if you go on Mill Connect in the ID card office online, it will walk you step by step how you can extend those certificates until such time that you can get back on the installation. It gives you, um, if you run into errors, if you have issues, there's a call number, all of it. So the key is you must be within that 30 days of your cat card expiring. Don't try and do it before. Sir? Yeah. And if, if you need information, again, you're, reach out to your first sergeant. First sergeant has all this information that they can get to you for a step-by-step. Here's who to call, this is what you log into, the whole bit, all right? We'll so, send it out again, sir. There you go, perfect. Thank you, Chief. There's some people are saying that they could have been problem with the noise with the sound during the coming back. Can you play it? And then we've got some questions about PME. We so are at that time for questions. Go ahead, Kim. I'll just go ahead and attack that since we were going to talk about it. So um, if you have not, I urge you to go on to our education and trainings uh, uh, SharePoint page and they have all the information on how they're doing virtual testing right now. Um, the first stop though when you have questions is your unit training manager. So that's who you should be talking to first if you have questions about testing. You can still test um, as we go through all this. So while we are still doing virtual, I'm going to go ahead and touch on everything mm -hmm. else. So it's a good time to get into BPC and work on all your evaluations, whether it's yours or you are um, writing somebody else's. It's a good time to get in there and do it. Um, another good one is your uh, outstanding orders and outstanding travel vouchers. So I think we've been doing a pretty good job here lately as a wing. Um, but I, I ask you to get back in there, um, try and tidy those things up. That's, that's money that is held out there that the wing cannot um, go in and use, right? It's held out here because it's owed to someone. So please get out there. If you have not done that order, then cancel it. If you didn't go on that trip, cancel it. Otherwise, we owe you money. So let us pay you, file that voucher, file that order. Um, with that, um, ADLS, right? So get into ADLS and continue to do whatever, what, whatever uh, training you need to do in that. And then EPME. So if you are enrolled in uh, ALS, NCOA, senior NCOA, good time to start getting that uh, done. If you need to get enrolled, reach out to your unit training manager so we can get that going for you. And if you're feeling froggy, Get out there and do, yeah, get out there and do your uh, senior enlisted joint PME one and two um, and get those done. And then, sir, if I may, um, just a reminder that the Enlisted uh, Developmental Education Board, uh, its due date is Monday, Monday for May, and um, it has to come to me. So it needs to go through your supervisor, and then it comes to me, and then um, step two, so stripes for exceptional performance is uh, coming up, the uh, due date for that is 6 June. Those also need to come to me so we can board. So uh, if you have amazing airmen out there, which I know we do, 
please uh, get your package together and I would love to see uh, a whole bunch of names on the board because uh, last year we actually turned stripes back um, in the techs and masters we turned back stripes. I would not like to see us leaving stripes on the table. We have too many great folks that are in this wing that are performing so. Um, so let's talk. I, I have to go past one thing that you may be covering okay. later. But nope. someone wants to know if they're doing a Zoom or any listening. Do they both need to be in uniform? Yes. Okay, so. So yes, the answer yes. is yes, they both need to be in uniform. And they want to know great information, but what about those who are not able to connect and have not been able to? Yeah, typically. Yeah, what? Need more like get online, get on. And someone else wants to know if their CAC is getting ready to expire and they need certificates, what can they do? So as I said earlier, go on the Mill Connect site and go to that. Um, it was the Mill Connect ID card office online and it will walk you through how you extend those certificates. And what we'll do is, if you're concerned about your CAT card at all, we're going to resend both emails out on um, how to, if the procedures for your CAT card, if it's expiring, and then also the certifications on how to push that back out. So I, I will say, uh, I give a kudos to um, uh, the, the techno nerds, right, the geeks, the A6, A6 folks, they have really done some heavy lifting here in this last 45 days to try to uh, open up the bandwidth, try to give us more VPN access, try to give us more uh, Zoom licenses, those kinds of things. So they've really done some hard work of trying to get us off into telecommuting world uh, and still be able to function. So Kim, go ahead. I'm sorry, you had probably another question. So, um, someone's saying they're not able to connect on any of the military sites. Okay, called SO. So, SO? That would be my next. Yep. Would be the first call I would make because they are still working. Call SCO. Um, they're able to troubleshoot quite a bit over the phone with you. We're also getting a few questions about if there will be a super UTA in June. That's a great transition point. See there? It's <laughs> like you're reading my script. No. Oh, all right. So. So the plan for the June UTA, so the, initially the plan was that we were going to take our May UTA, not do a May UTA, and butt it up against the June UTA. And as I thought through that and listened to my SAGE advisors, uh, I realized that yes, we had a lot of folks that were potentially at home, out of work, not getting paid. So I said, you know what, I'm going to let commanders be commanders and allow them to schedule the UTA in May, do it a, as a virtual UTA. And we have a lot of our folks in maintenance, I think ASTS, there are some other units that are doing their virtual UTA this weekend, right? So the plan for the super UTA in June, um, I will say it's still a plan to have a four-day UTA in June for some units. And why am I saying that? Because right now AMDS is planning on doing a four-day UTA in June because they're going to try to knock out some of the PHAs uh, both on the flying and the non-flying side for the PHAs. Um, they're even going to do some kind of uh, unique things. They're going to do some telehealth or tele, uh, telecom PHAs instead of doing things in person, right? So they, we have been given some leeway from Africa SG to do that so that they don't have to do a face-to-face, -face, right? So that they're going to work through some of those. All these things are going to be scheduled in advance. The individuals will know when they're going to be scheduled for. But the June UTA is still on for that first week in June. Uh, the other thing that I wanted, that the policy change that I put out today was I am backing off on having everybody maintain 10 days of AT. Now I'm backing off and saying I want you to keep five days of AT so that when we get through this initial wave and we have some breathing room and start bringing people back to base, I have some pay statuses to put people in so that we can shoot the gun, see Bernie, all those things that need to uh, keep us ready because our country expects, of, uh, expects that of us. Uh, is that clear for the June UTA? Does that? Okay. All right. Um, 
Here's the thing I want to talk about, though, if you're coming to base, right? If you're coming to base in June or, or, or you're considered mission critical and you're coming out here. First and foremost, if you're feeling symptoms and you're feeling sick, don't come out here, all right? We want you to stay home. We want you to be healthy. So stay home, all right, if you're not feeling well. Uh, if you're feeling well and you're planning to come out to base, AMD is working through some procedures right AMDS is working through some procedures right now to complete a questionnaire that can be reviewed. Uh, and then they're gonna, we're going to be asking you to take your temperature before you leave home, and then when you, they'll take your temperature when you get to base. So they're putting procedures in place so that it protects you and it protects our AMDS uh, professionals out there in the uh, medical world so that they're, they're not exposing themselves. All right? So that will be coming out here shortly with, uh, in the procedures for doing all that. Uh, the one thing I, I would push for those folks, certainly that are doing virtual UTAs now, this weekend, or even this throughout the month, is if you're due a PHA in the next 30, 60, 90 days, do your web HA. Knock that out. Okay, that's a great one to get during a virtual UTA. Get that done because they can't schedule your PHA until that has been complete. All right. The other portion of that is the mental health assessment and uh, where you have to go through the LHI contractor, you're having to call them and go through, the, through that process. Your PHA cannot be closed out from the medical professionals until that has been completed. So if that is sitting out there, take care of that during the virtual UTA as well, right? Because there's procedures for that and they're pretty good at calling back at the times that you've set up for an appointment. So let's try to take care of those things. That's all part of those things that Chief was mentioning about uh, vouchers and evals and those those admin things let's get those things done now so that when we have to do come out and start kicking down doors and doing small iron fires and things like that we'll, we have the bandwidth to do that all right I think it's important sir to give a shout out to AMDS so um, they are really catching up so uh, we got word that Doc Kennedy knocked out over 200 200, 200 PHAs on Friday alone so uh, Let's give them a little bit more work. So get your uh, your web HAs done, and uh, so we can get these all caught up before we all get back. And I will shout out, uh, we had several folks that were due uh, TAP, Transition Assistance Program, and they've been taking that care of the virtual TAP, and they've been knocking it out. We have had a lot of folks that have done a lot of that training and getting that done. So again, that's another thing that gets you off ADLS or gets you off BPN so that you can work on those things at home in your Fuzzy pink slippers, you don't have to be in your um, in your uniform to do that, right? Uh, Kim, any questions? Um, will there be any updates pushed for non-commuters in June if the DOD travel restrictions are not changed by the end of the month? Will there be any updates? Yes, sir. So yes, there will be. So um, they are looking at this, I would say, almost in 15-day increments now. Um, and by next Friday, we're going to have, it's going to be another change of seeing what this new normal is going to look like. So there may be some guidance that comes out from that. But yes, I want to, uh, uh, we want to make sure that we're giving you the best information possible. So when they changed that guidance and the SECDEF came out with the new policy letter for the stop movement here last week, I guess it was last week. I'm losing track of my days. Yeah. Um, they are working through right now, the AFRIC staff is working through right now a policy letter for General SCOBY to sign to say, okay, here's how that policy guidance that the SECDEF gave fits into what we do as reserves, right? Because we operate a little bit differently because we're part-time. So that guidance is certainly going to come out. So I know that will come out here. I thought it was supposed to be due yesterday, but maybe it'll come out here this Monday or Tuesday this next week. But certainly as this guidance comes through, we're going to continue to provide input to you and we'll do more Facebook Live sessions, and we'll do more videos and put information out on our social uh, networking site and social uh, uh, media so that we're connecting to you and communicating to you. That was a good question. And I want to know if there's any updates for those deployed overseas trying to get home because someone's got orders that they're being they're, they're reading my script. My goodness. All right, so let's jump into that then. So yes, there is a plan for the redeployers. So when all this happened, we. Uh, uniquely, we had some individuals that were deployed, mobilized and deployed, and they were scheduled to come back in April 
and in May, and then demob in May. Um, because of the stop movement that was in place, they have gone through and the SECDEF, and I think it was delegated down to SECAF, has taken those mobilizations and extended those mobilizations, uh, and I don't know by how many days, but I don't want to give that information out. So they've extended those, those orders out there. Um, that does not mean to say that they are absolutely going to be till the extension of those orders. No, that's just buying them time so that they can start getting people in place because they have to have people in place before they can get people back, right? So the people that are coming in place have to go through the 14 days of uh, ROM, they're calling it, restriction and movement or quarantine before they go downrange because they want clean crews downrange doing the job, right? So we have some time there. And then getting people home from the deployment, they're prioritizing those folks that need to come home from the deployment. So the priority right now for the on the reserve side are those folks that have volunteered, previously volunteered for an MPA tour to go downrange um, and have not volunteered to extend. They want to come home, all right? And, and I understand that. So they want to get those people home first. The folks after that priority are those, those individuals that have um, – uh, high year tenure, retirements, separations, those things, those hard and fast that we need to get the person back in, in uh, back from the deployed location. And then they're going to start working down with our members that have been deployed. So there is a plan in place. They're working that transportation plan to get to and from, uh, but we're just extending those mobilization orders, just bought them time to do that. So uh, the good thing is the individual's pay is going to continue. They're not going to have their pay messed up during this time frame, and we've been uh, keeping close tabs on that with the uh, IPR office to make sure those orders are taken care of. So we have another question about when will deployer stuck in place by the stop movement order see approved order modifications and arrows? So they did last week a bunch of those orders mod. Um, if it were up to us, we'd do them right now, but the problem is uh, we have to have there's a system called M4S, which is, that is in the finance system of how M, uh, AMC and ACC uh, obligates money in the MPA arena, all right? We have to have the extension information in that system before that we can physically go into arrows and extend your order, all right? So that, a lot of that is being done. There's a lot of moving parts, but we're keeping tabs on that. I think the first individuals that we have don't, uh, their orders don't end until the 12th or 13th of May, so we do have some time on that, uh, but we're, they're working diligently to make sure that that happens. So that's a great question, too. So um, two questions about upcoming UTAs. One person wants to know if June UTA can be virtual, and also a question about fit-to-fight extensions and what happens if they're coming due. So um, there was lots of discussions on the fit-to-fight, the extensions on that. Um, that I will say that policy letter is as of Friday was sitting up in the Pentagon working its way through so the policy guidance is coming out about that every there are a lot of people asking about that question all right so don't worry about that um, we will make sure that people are protected you're not going to get uh, uh, any type of harm done to you or your career because you can't take the fitness test right they, they know that they're just working through the smart policy letter to make sure that they have the right policy in place before we go forward. So that is working its way through. That was the second part. What was the first part of the question? Yes, you um, if June can be a oh, virtual June can be a virtual UTA. So the answer to that is yes, June can be a virtual UTA for some uh, because some people we will need to either uh, do a tele, uh, excuse me, teleconference PHA or need to come out here to get some things done for getting ready for deployment or for uh, for readiness items. So yes, there will be some options for for uh, virtual UTA. And and quite honestly, um, next year when we do in 21 for our schedule, I'm looking at maybe doing one of those UTAs as a virtual UTA because I think it's beneficial to allow our folks to get some of these things done in that in that environment versus having them travel and forth back to the base. So more to come on that one. I have a great question, though. If, um, 
if hotels are going to be up and running when we show if they show up in June, and will they receive guidance on proper conduct during June UTAs as far as haircuts, social distancing, and face masks? Yep. Uh, great questions, and yes, they will be. In fact, the uh, the hotels have been reaching out to Chief Reyes and going. Gosh, we'd love to have your business back because they're they're wanting they're hurting just like a lot of us are right a lot of the individuals are so yes they are um, they like a lot of businesses that you have seen uh, on the news or on different uh, uh, social media uh, postings are they're doing their best to make sure that uh, they're taking care of their their uh, paid guests mm -hmm. right so the short answer to that is yes um, that they're working through some of those things and. Uh, we're going to do what we can to make sure that we are protecting our individuals. Like General Scobia said, we want to protect Americans and we want to take care of our airmen and their families. Someone is asking if bonuses are still being paid during this time. They are. They are. So if you are seeing a, a hiccup in your bonus, again, please reach out to your unit training manager and or the group and wing training manager, so, or the career advisor, excuse me, your unit career advisor, group career advisor, or the wing career advisor if you're experiencing any um, hiccup in your uh, bonus pay. So that was another reason why we didn't cancel any UTAs and allowed to do a telecommute because if they were canceling UTA, there could have been a problem with getting the bonus, and we didn't want that, right? So yes, the bonuses are being paid, so if, it, if you're having an issue, contact your first sergeant and they'll put you in touch with the right person. Right? <laughs> Sir, I think um, there was a question about grooming standards, and I and I think that's a great point to bring up. And and if you can pan over Sergeant Hong, um, First Sergeant Amable from the 714th is here, but she is also on orders as the wing First Sergeant, so she's gonna she's gonna hold me accountable and correct me if I'm wrong. So grooming standards. So we all know that um, uh, barbers and hair salons and and whatnot are are not open here in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. So yes, we understand that that haircuts um, or for some of us uh, ladies that uh, color our hair um, may look not like it normally does. So yes, we understand that your hair may not be cut exactly the way it should be. Um, there, there are relaxed grooming standards. What that doesn't mean is roll into the installation with a with, with a full up beard, um, that's that's not acceptable. So uh, we understand issues with your hair, we got it, we're tracking, um, just just be smart about it, be an adult about it, and uh, we hope to see you. And I will say there were no humans or animal, animals that were injured in the growing of this mustache. Mm. Or right. this. You did get a, a compliment on the mustache. Hey, thank you, ah. good, thank you. Junior UTA is not canceled. It will not be canceled. We will do a telecommute UTA or a virtual UTA before I cancel any UTA. So we are not canceling any UTAs. For the ops side, are there any updates on maintaining currency or waiver extensions? So there have been, um, and I'll keep it on the, uh, I'll be, keep OPSEC concerns here, but um, so the short answer to that is yes. Uh, Africa A3 and Air Force A3 has worked through several different options that the OG has in their uh, pocket to extend some currencies on some different events. Um, and I won't get into all those different ones, but an ops person will know what I mean there about uh, those currencies or those uh, different loggable items, that there are some waivable time frame that they can uh, allow that to lapse. So. Question, for those allowed to travel to base, what are the resources businesses still open? DFAC, military clothing? Yeah, Chief, you got sure. it. Sure, so uh, the DFAC is open, um, only Halverson Hall, so uh, building 5555 over on the Army side is not open. Um, it's for takeout only. Um, they are providing a takeout in shirt, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they do have a hot meal option now. So they're uh, flash freezing, is that the correct? Flash freezing um, certain items so you can take it to go and microwave it and heat it up should should you want to. Um, military clothing is open. They did shift 
the days that they're open. So they were open, uh, let's see if I can get this right. They were Sunday, closed Monday, and then open Tuesday through Saturday. Right. So now they've shifted to where they are closed on Sunday, open Monday through Saturday. Does that make sense? Did I do that right? So they used to be open on Sunday, but closed on Monday, but now they're open Monday and closed on Sunday. Open the rest of the time. Yes, open the rest of the time. Yep. Um, other services, let's see. Uh, so Pudgy's is still closed. Mm -hmm. um, food court is open, uh, takeout only, um, but they have adjusted hours. So here's what I would tell you. If you're concerned or you are curious about what is open and what is closed or adjusted hours, download the JBMDL app and there is a stoplight chart on there that will tell you exactly what is open, what is closed, and what has adjusted hours. Good. Sergeant Cannon tells, says it was just emailed out yesterday. Thanks, Sergeant Cannon. Oh, JBMDL PA. Yeah. So a member uh, has a reenlistment that's due in September. Can they do an in-person reenlistment? Um, so, September's light years away from now. <laughs> yeah. um, it, I tell you, if we if we can do it in person, we will do it in person, all right? Um, even if it means that we have to wear a mask and go that route. But yes, if we can, we, we're going to try to do that in person. I think that's that's a more official function that I, mm -hmm. I, I think would be important to do in person. Um, and as you're talking about the food, there are plenty of uh, places off base that are still providing takeout food, uh, both the sm local smoke across the street, uh, the bamboo house, the Shinusto house, the... Yep. Uh, they are begging for people to come out, and and their the food's fantastic still. So and the lines aren't long. Uh, it's absolutely, she, uh, Kim, go ahead. So another question: Is the Med Group participating in any antibody testing for members? So that is the next topic of discussion. That they're uh, the eighty seventh Med Group, and then I would say the DoD in general is getting into is the antibody testing to determine if you've had uh, if you've had the COVID already, right? Um, we're not there yet. They are working through some of the different manufacturers of that so that they can kind of ramp up the production of that so they can get that going. And that I know is a priority. Uh, it's been a priority that myself and all, a lot of the other wing commanders have been screaming for, not only for testing, but for antibody testing, because now we're on the, the going to be on that backside of the wave and we really need to know who has had that. So we're getting there. And then right if you said that, will there be any kind of testing available for reservists? Um, yes, I think eventually. Um, it, it's it's going to be supply chain, and it's going to be, you know, it's the priorities. So the priorities are going to be for deployers and things like that. So um, what we are pushing for this year is to ensure that the medical logistics uh, provides the yearly annual flu shot vaccine in a timely manner so we're not waiting for it like we did this last year. I want to know if the Quadrant Picnic is canceled for July. Yes. Yeah. The Squadron Picnic is canceled for July. The uh, Wing Picnic Family Day that we were going to plan for in August is canceled as well. Um, and, and I, when I canceled it, it wasn't thinking that, oh, August is going to be bad. No, I was canceled because if we're doing virtual UTAs, we don't give anybody a chance to plan it with the last the next several UTAs. So um, we are working in the chaplain's office, in fact, reached out to me and see if we can do some type of burger burn uh, when we do get back together. And so we're looking at some of those things, and I think that that will help us get socially connected again. Uh, but again, it's this at so and this new normal and how we go work through that, and we will, we will. I think um, a great segue, though, is kind of some of the things that um, our members can manage expectations mm -hmm. um, on when they come back. So perhaps talk about, um, did you already talk about so the VDI? I haven't yet. Um, so I have been in discussions with uh, the Africa IG, um, Colonel Ostrat, um, and he he was a previous member of the Freedom Wing, so he knows what we're dealing with up here. Um, and he's been very... Uh, very kind, very considerate, understands what's going on and wants to provide us the tools necessary uh, and give us good feedback on how we're doing as a wing. So right now, this is tentative, but right now we're looking at our, our, our UEI, makeup UEI, since we never had it in March, in the 
early February time frame, early February of 21. That's a tentative, right? Um, lots of things can happen between now and then, but we need to start planning some of these things so as we go along, we know what to expect. You know, manage expectations, that I always, that I always say. Um, but keep working, keep working in MICT. Again, that's a great thing you can do virtually. You can take care of your programs in MICT, ask those questions. But I know eventually you're going to have to get out to base because not everything can be done telecommuting. So, so with that, yeah. sir, um, so uh, a lot of people, they have masks. Um, maybe it's a mask that you can't wear in uniform. Um, so AFRC uh, bought, purchased um, a whole bunch of masks. Uh, they are being shipped to Grissom Air Reserve Base in Indiana um, as the hub to spoke out to all the wings. And we have uh, quite a few that are heading here to the 514th so we can start giving masks to those that need it when they come to the installation that they can wear in uniform. Good. Thank you, Chief. Um, so, Kim, any remaining questions we'll hold on to because I would like to spend the last few minutes here talking about a, uh, uh, it's always a, I would say difficult subject, but yes. it's a subject that needs to be talked about nonetheless, all right? Um, and it's, I think it's especially poignant right now uh, as we're being uh, socially disconnected from folks and being um, uh, put in our homes, you know, stay at home order and quarantine, those kinds of things. And it's, uh, it's suicide prevention. All right. Um, you've heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. I don't believe there is anything on this green earth that is bad enough that you can, should take your own life for. There's nothing that uh, is that bad that you have to take your own life. Absolutely not for that. Um, you, you and every member, everyone out there, and certainly every member of the Freedom Wing is absolutely valuable. Valuable to me, valuable to Chief, valuable to your leadership. So we want to make sure that we're building those connections and maintaining those meaningful connections to others uh, because it's a valuable tool to help prevent those thoughts of suicide. Mm -hmm. um, our airmen, they, they just have to be reaching out. If, you are, if you're hurting right now, if you're going struggling through some things, reach out. We have people that will help you, all right? Um, if you have no place else to reach out to, reach out to your first sergeant, and they will put you in contact with those those people as um, with those professionals that can give us the help. Because I, uh, I've also said this before, reaching out for help is a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Yes, sir. So stress is normal. It's a normal part of life. Um, I think. What happens though is those those stressors become so so big so large and it and it causes causes distress in our lives and and we're unable to cope like we normally would. Um, I think it's important though that we are able to identify those um, distress signals um, not only in our wingman but also in ourselves. So so here's some things. Um, if you see extreme mood changes, um, specifically depression and, and anxiety, um, that, that's a key one. Um, irritability, uh, agitation, or anger. Um, some people are like that all the time, right? Or that's their demeanor. And some people it's not. And so when you see that shift, that's another sign. Um, another one is a difficulty to sleep. Either they're sleeping a lot more than they used to, or they're just not getting the sleep and you're able to see it. That is a sign. Um, and then when they're withdrawing, right? So there's a difference between somebody that's truly an introvert and then somebody that is pulling back from their loved ones, right? That support system, their family, their friends. If you see somebody start doing that or you're doing it yourself, you're probably have signs of distress, you are in a stressful situation. Um, when we identify that, it, it's time to reach out. So, sir, with that. Uh, so, we like acronyms, uh, certainly in the military. And one of the acronyms that they use is uh, called ACE, A-C-E. Um, and using it in this 
in this context, the A stands for ask, all right? This is probably the toughest thing, I think, where people have a challenge to, if they recognize some of those signs of distress in somebody, in one of their wingmen, um, that they're a little bit, um, they, they don't want to ask, hey, are you okay? Are you thinking of hurting yourself? Please, please I, are you considering suicide of any kind? Okay, that question might just save somebody's life. Asking that question could, could potentially save somebody's life, all right? So ask. The C in that is, is the natural progression from asking because it shows you care about that individual, all right? You care enough to notice that they have signs of distress. You care enough to notice that uh, you want to find out what's going on. You're asking them the questions, and then you care enough that you want to help them and stand by their side as a true wingman and help them out through that, all right? Um, that can send and communicate very strongly to empathy when you are standing by your airman's side as they get through that. Mm -hmm. And so finally, the E in that is escort, right? So when your, your wingman, uh, your friend, your loved one has expressed that, that they are at that point, um, then we want to get them to the, that next level of care, that, that SME, that resource, um, without overwhelming them, right? So we don't want to push them and push them and push them, but help them come to that uh, conclusion um, to pick two, maybe three, maybe four resources that would be that export, uh, expert to that next level of care and get them there. Never, ever, ever leave that person alone, ever. So. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, so one of the things that we've gone through as, as they look at some of the statistical data from, uh, from past suicide attempts and uh, is that uh, a lot of folks saw them and didn't ask. A lot of folks saw those signs of distress and didn't ask. Strangely enough, a lot of these uh, spouses saw that. I think it was 40, 40 something percent is what I've heard is a statistic where they saw that. So spouses, if you see that in your significant other, reach out to the Key Spouse Network and we will put you in contact with those individuals that, that can help them, all right? Um, so as uh, Sergeant Hong was pointing out, we have a, uh, a flyer that, uh, again, the Air Force likes acronyms called Go Slow. So the premise behind this is that um, what they've discovered is that one out of four suicide attempts, um, the decision to, uh, to go ahead with the suicide attempt, uh, from the decision to the time they actually made the attempt was within five minutes. So they're wanting to slow that down and kind of give a barrier of time so maybe somebody, a wingman, can step in. Uh, the individual can go, what am I thinking? Uh, I need help. Let me reach out to my first sergeant, my commander, my friend, whatever it may be. So the SLO are the, are the acronyms that are used here. S stands for SAFES. L's are LOCKS. And O is outside the home. So what they're referring to on this, specifically for this, is for firearms. All right? So... If you put your firearm in a safe, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to go through and open up that safe, right? That's, that's critical time. If you have a lock on it, maybe you give a lock, the key to somebody else, your spouse or something. Uh, or if you're just really concerned about it, take your firearms outside the home. So I am not telling you get rid of your firearms, all right? I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you I'm trying to give you some tools for your toolkit. Uh, as we go through this difficult time to go, you know what, um, these are some uh, tactics that you can use to make sure that uh, if you start thinking of some of those things, you've at least bought yourself some time to help the decision space, right? Um, Chief, one of, the, one of the things that uh, that is helping with that. So our mission partner, the 87, um, has a, a lock program and uh, what they do uh, what they have is they have um, procured a bunch of locks 
Um, we have in the 514th have a hundred that have been given to us. Um, and what we will do is our wing first sergeant right now, Sergeant Amy Bull, will have those and distribute to the squadron first sergeants. If you are in need of a lock, either for yourself or for a wingman, a loved one, all you have to do is let your first sergeant know and we will get it to you. We will find a way to get it to you so you can have a lock. And you know what it costs? Nothing. Just the ask. I would rather you ask. That's, that's a free resource, right? Uh, so it, just going through in summary, keep connected with your members, keep connected with your family. Uh, we've got different ways to do it with Teams and Zoom and Skype and all those things that are out there that help us keep connected to individuals. Uh, recognize those signs of distress that you might see in yourself or in others. Uh, that ask the care and the escort for uh, being a good wingman if you suspect somebody might be having a, a, a thoughts of suicide and then the go slow the uh, safe locks and uh, outside the home for storing your firearms um, so difficult topics to talk about but it's important nonetheless and I think it's important especially right now as we go through uh, through what we've gone through that I've not seen in my in my time uh, around. Uh, but Chief, let's talk about uh, some of those questions that they, they wanted us to discuss. Maybe it might give people an insight into what what we're going through, maybe, right? Some resiliency questions. Yeah, yeah. how about that? So one of the questions uh, that was posed was, uh, in times of change, chaos, and uncertainty, your core values are a constant. What personal values ground you? So, so I'm asking myself this question, right? Um, so I look at it in, in two, two lenses, right? My work and my personal. Um, for me, um, work-wise, it's, it's my wingman, right? So my wingman, my primary wingman is Colonel Pemberton. Right. So when I'm having those days where I feel like everything's coming apart, nothing's working, um, and I feel out of control, Colonel Pemberton is my is my person. Right. I can go to him and sir, this, 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 and this, and he grounds me. Right. So that's that's one um, avenue that I do. Personal is a little different though, mm -hmm. especially during these times. So um, for those of you that that know, um, or for those of you that don't know, um, so my husband is a, is a pilot for Delta, and he is in Georgia, and we are separated during all this, all things COVID-19. And so he's my person, that's my best friend. Um, he grounds me, um, but we're separated. Um, so we rely heavily on FaceTime. And um, it's not just a, hey, FaceTime call. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How was your day? Great, fine. No, we go through ret routines that we would normally be together. Um, so when I get home, I put the phone up. I hit FaceTime. He's there. I may be cooking dinner. We may be talking. We may not. But it, it gives some sort of routine, routine and normalcy, normalcy right? yeah. during everything that's going on. So those are some of the things. And then... I, I have a, what I consider a strong faith base, so that helps as well. Um, so that's that's how I'm getting through and and using those items to ground me during this. Very good, very good, Chief. Uh, and you're you're my monument as well because I there are days when I come in and I'm like, how are we going to do this one now? You know, and so right. I, I think through those things and uh, so we're we're trying to do our best. Um, uh, one of the questions that I asked if. If isolated or quarantined, share what has been keeping your spirits up. So uh, it's, I'd say it's a broad range of things from some big to some not so big that still keeps my spirits up. So I'd say certainly for the big that we saw in the past couple days was the America Strong flybys um, and getting texts and uh, uh, pictures and videos sent from some of our folks that live and work in New York uh, and and to see the the boost to the spirits that that gave folks. That was 
that was pretty powerful to me. Um, and the, so even the little things, so I came home from work yesterday and, or came, excuse me, came home at lunch yesterday and was working through some things, thinking through some, we had a couple of teleconferences that we had to do yesterday afternoon. Uh, and my wife mentioned before I locked out, she, she said, what do you want for dinner? And I said, I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. I said, I, I think I made an offhand comment. I said, man, I'd sure love, a, love to have a bucket of chicken. We haven't had a bucket of chicken from KFC in a long time. But whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. So as I came home yesterday, she was leaving out the door to drive to go get a bucket of chicken for us. So it's those little things that we do for each other that help keep our spirits up and that show, help us show each other that we care, right? Um, let's... Uh, We'll go the last couple sure. there. Um, so here's what I uh, what I will give to you right now is Kim. How many people we have? We have still a hundred and something people. Yeah, we have under two hundred. Oh. You have more questions too. If you can just kind of so I'm not sure. We've only got a couple minutes left. I want to know if there's going to be a heavy flyby. When is the heavy flyby oh. happening? Oh. Big heavy flyby. Yes. Yeah, so we will have a heavy flyby. Uh, my current ops folks or our current ops folks are working that right now, coordinating it with it. Um, it will be certainly by next Friday, I think, is the deadline that we're, we're shooting for. Uh, but we're picking a primary and an alternate date to, uh, for New Jersey weather. Uh, but that will be here within the, next, uh, within the next 12 to 14 days. But we will give at least five-day notice when that, when that gets ready to happen. So good question. We have three questions about masks. In June, will they have to wear masks if they come back on base? Yes. And will there be a 514th mask that they'll be able to wear? Uh, we will be able to get some of these masks that have Africa has purchased, and we should have those. I think we should have those probably by the end of next week. Mm -hmm. probably but they can wear a mask as long as it falls into the spirit, right, uh, uniformity of our uniform. So sage green, black, green, those kind of things. So that guidance has yeah. all been put out, or a medical mask. I think uh, Chief Blake Hannah has one as well. So if you notice... Gators are the gators. Are the gators are the big ones. Yep. So. And Colonel Aaron says there's 2,000 gators, or you can also use an eye mask. As yep. a mask. But someone else wants to know if OCP masks would be mailed to their homes. Uh, no. Can't do that. I don't, I don't have the money, for one. <laughs> so, and DOD uh, actually came out and said do not use uniforms to break down and make masks. Yeah, don't use old uniforms for that because they're treated with some stuff and you don't want to breed that stuff in. So uh, the rest of the questions, since I, I don't want to take anybody's time, the rest of the questions we will take offline and make sure we get those responses back to you. But uh, as I said, here's one of the things I want to give to you. For the 200 and something people that are online right now, 200 and something. Okay, so if you... Uh, you can use this number, you can use your first search number, your commander's number if you have it. You can text the word HOPE, H-O-P-E, to that number or one of those other numbers and we will give you credit for suicide prevention for 2020, all right? Don't tell anybody else. They're going to have to watch this video to get this training. So, but we, I wanted to make sure that after we talk through this that we would I'd get you something to log off on for training, all right? So, but... I, I really feel passionate about taking care of our, our, our airmen uh, and taking care of the Freedom Wing because you are such valuable, you are a, a national treasure. Um, and right now, the American public expects, wants us, expects us to step up and show that it can be done. And if I know anybody that can show that it can be done, it's members of the Freedom Wing. So, Chief, any closing comments you want to make? No, I would say uh, just stay safe. Right, stay healthy, um, report if you get sick. Um, so please, 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 um, if you are tested and you're test positive, please let your leadership know because we care about you. So Colonel Pemberton and I have been calling all those that have tested positive because we care. We wanna know how you're feeling and how you're doing. Um, but uh, stay resilient, um, stay safe uh, in whatever battle space you're in, whether that's home, work, what have you. But uh, we miss you and uh, we can't wait until everybody can come back. And Mike, get a shot of that. Get a shot of that beautiful weather outside. Oh, just okay. Fine.
So after you get done with this, take five minutes to go outside, get some fresh air, get some sunshine, um, and it's what I've always, what Chief already brought up. Uh, turn off the 24 hours news cycle, go read a book, go take a nice walk, get outside a little bit, get some fresh air, watch a funny movie, read a funny book. Do those things to get some normalcy back to your life because as we've talked, this may be a, is more of a marathon than a sprint. So we need to each other to get through this. So take care of yourselves, protect yourselves, and Freedom Wing, we look forward to seeing you here soon, all right? Take care.